Thinking back to my early years as a trader, I realized that some of my biggest mistakes happened because I was overconfident. What I mean is that when I had a string of successful trades, my confidence grew. And honestly, to varying degrees, I just threw caution to the wind. I didn't take time to research the companies that I was trading in to make sure that first, that they were strong companies with a long successful track record. I also didn't take time to make sure that the technicals were lined up in my favor. Honestly, I began to feel invincible. I felt like I had figured this thing out and that I must be a lot smarter than a lot of other traders who have been doing it for so long. However, I quickly learned that I was wrong. When you begin to think that you have already figured out what's taken successful, intelligent, smart traders years to figure out, that's when it's time to be careful. Even to this day, when I begin to get that naive feeling of, I got this all figured out, I remind myself to stay humble, alert, and to stay focused. Never stop learning. You don't and never will have it all figured out. Don't let pride get in the way of you being a successful trader. This leads us to my second tip. When you begin trading with real money, please know that it's a completely different game than trading with play money. You might mentally be telling yourself, okay, so I'm gonna treat this play money exactly like I would my real money. But I'm sorry, although we may try to trick our mind to do this, it's just not the same. There are so many more emotions tied to real life stock and options trading that a game or play money, it just doesn't simulate. The game or trading with play money does help you to prepare, but it does not help you to prepare with the emotions that you're most likely going to encounter, especially when you begin to trade with your own real money. Because of that, I encourage you, when you begin trading with real money, trade a lot smaller than you think you should. I promise your emotions of fear and greed, they're going to be your enemy. It takes time to learn to control those emotions. For some traders, it can take years. In fact, some traders, they never get them under control, and as a result, they are no longer traders. Traders who can't control their emotions put themselves right out of the business, or as I like to call it, because I love it so much, they put themselves right out of this game. Technology can be an awesome thing. I remember the first time that I ran several back tests in my trading accounts. At that time, I had one of my accounts with a broker that gave me the ability to write trading programs that could automate my trading. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours writing over 300 automated trading algorithms. I back tested them until I believed that I had all the kinks worked out. I thought I had the perfect trading strategy. However, the problem with back testing is it's not absolutely the same as real life trading. For example, it doesn't replicate the slippage that you're going to experience when you enter and exit positions. Some programs allow you to figure in a slippage factor, but it's just not the same as real life. When the market is crashing, if you're trying to buy put options back to close them out or to initiate a position, you're most likely not going to get in the middle of the bid and the ask. And the opposite is true when the markets are going up and you're trying to buy call options back to close them out or to initiate positions. Or as you may know if you watch my channel, I like to trade in leaps options in non or low dividend paying companies. Getting a leaps option field at the midpoint between a bid and an ask, it's very difficult and rare to do if you're trying to get it done very quickly. Another important point about back testing is that it doesn't allow for execution errors. When I place orders, I check those orders at least three times before I hit that submit button. I absolutely detest making a mistake because I know it's gonna cost me some profit. And I don't like to make errors. In fact, over the past several months, I've only made one error out of hundreds of trades that we've done. But that one error, it cost me several hundred dollars. Errors, they will happen. If you're careful, you'll keep them to absolute minimum. But they do happen even for the most meticulous traders. I save what I think is the most important for the last when it comes to this subject of back testing. The most important factor that backtesting does not do for you is that it does not allow you to see how your emotions will respond to market crashes or to market euphoria. It doesn't allow you to determine how clear or foggy your head will be when you look at your account and it's down thousands of dollars or when it's up thousands of dollars in one day. These fluctuations, they can really play tricks on your mind and your trading psyche. Dealing positions that go in your favor or against you is something that only real life trading can teach you. One of the most important pieces of becoming a successful long-term stock and option trader is to find a trading strategy that fits your personality. I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you. Some traders, they may find that trading strategy pretty quickly. Others may go through many different trading styles before they figure out one that matches their personality and risk tolerance. The trading style that I'm currently using and I've been using for many years was actually the very first one that I tried out. However, like many traders, the return just wasn't what I was hoping it was going to be. I wanted to be a baseball player who was batting 2,000, but I was so new to trading that I was ignorant to what it meant to be a successful long-term trader. My expectations, they were really far from reality. Even now, I always want to be improving as a trader, and I'm sure you're the same way because that's why you're watching this video. But once you find a trading style that matches your personality, risk tolerance, 
and helps you achieve returns that you're hoping for, be consistent with it. Now, I'm not saying that you should never tweak or change that trading style, but once you know that a system works, stick with it. Hone your skill and become better at it. Plan your trades and then trade your plan. Don't let other traders cause you to do trades that normally you wouldn't dream of doing. And if you have a down month, it doesn't necessarily mean that your trading plan is broken. Bad months, well, they're just going to happen. Giving up on a system that worked for you over time just because of one or two bad months, well, it probably means that you're just an immature trader and that you've let your emotions possibly begin to cloud your thinking. It shows that maybe you lack some emotional control. Now, I'm not referring to when a new trader has an unproven system or maybe they're using too much margin or leverage or have a trading strategy that's clearly flawed. What I'm referring to is when you have a proven system that's worked for you for years, but then all of a sudden you have a bad month or two. In my opinion, if you found a strategy that works most of the time and fits your personality, you should probably stick with it. The next tip is about making wise, well thought out, patient decisions and trades. If you find that you're making trading decisions that make you feel better, there's most likely a bad decision somewhere in there. For example, let's say that you're experiencing that common emotion, the fear of missing out. The markets are going up. You see people in different chat rooms or on videos that are making all kind of money. And as a result, you jump into a trade just to be involved. Well, that's probably a bad decision. On the other hand, let's say that you're in a position that's gone against you. Maybe the position size is a little too big or maybe it's a lot too big. And you knew that going into the position. You knew that up front, but you're very confident about this trade. If you decide to get out of the position and it makes you feel better, there's probably something wrong with that position. Decisions made because of fear and greed are almost always bad decisions. By the way, if that was really useful what I just share with you, and I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And if becoming a more profitable option in a stock trader is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Something I like to remind myself is that if I have a hard time sleeping at night because the position size is too large or I have positions in companies that I don't really feel comfortable with, then that potential position is a bad decision. If you have a hard time sleeping at night because the market crashed and you're worried about one or all of your positions, that means that your mind is trying to tell you that you have a flaw in your trading strategy. If you realize that, then you need to fix that right away. There are all kinds of opinions on diversification. Some very mature and successful traders say that diversification is a bad idea. Others say that diversification is extremely important. I'm just going to tell you that there have been times in my trading career when I was not diversified. I had, for example, say 40 to 50% of my portfolio in just one position. Many times it went well, but to be frank with you, I don't really remember those times that went well because what I really remember is that several times they went against me in a really big way. Look, things are just going to happen to companies that we trade in. There's no way for us to know when some lawsuit, product recall, or external market situation like a pandemic or a war might occur that will have a harmful effect on our otherwise profitable company. Another way to diversify is to enter or build trades and positions slowly. For example, in our portfolio, we want a maximum position size of 5% in any one position. However, many times our full position size will actually be around 2 to 3%. That gives an additional 2 to 3% to play with if the position goes against us. But even that initial 2 to 3% position size, I generally went into those positions slowly over time. I'll sell a put option or two today. If the turn is still good and the stock is still finding nice support, I'll add to it the next day. If on the third day the stock begins to show weakness, then I'll pause with adding any more to that position size. However, if it continues to look good, we have capital available, then I'll continue adding to the position until we reach that 2 to 3% position size. I know some of you have smaller accounts, and so a two to 5% position size, it might be difficult or maybe even impossible. If that's the case, you just need to decide for yourself how much you're going to have at risk in each position. And remember to be as diversified as possible. My next tip is one that I know is wise because one of the smartest people of all time alluded to it. Albert Einstein once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. What did he mean by that? Einstein was saying that it was desirable to keep even complex things as simple as possible. If you have a position with 10 legs, I'm sorry, but it's going to be very difficult and complicated to get out of that position. I have found in trading as well as business that sometimes the smartest people, they think their way right out of business. There are a lot of things that we can do to make what we do complicated and confusing. Our goal should be to make things as simple and clear as possible. 
Have a trading strategy that is simple and allows you to make quick, clear, and well thought out decisions. On top of that, if you're having to get out of a position and it's extremely complicated, the cost of trading commissions, slippage, and possible execution errors, well, they will all increase the more complicated a position is. If you find yourself in a position that's complicated, you know that you'll have to exit in the coming days, simplify the position as much as possible leading up to that final day. That way it won't be a really stressful, confusing, and challenging day for you. Don't wait until the very last possible minute. This will help you to avoid stress, give you time to execute your orders at better fill prices, and increase the odds of you exiting the position at your optimal price. The next tip is one that requires almost superhuman abilities for some of us traders. And that's because it goes against the very character of many successful traders' personalities. However, this tip is vital for you to possess if you want to be a successful long-term trader. Have you ever heard the saying, patience is a virtue? Do you know what that means? One possible meaning is that if you are a patient trader, you have the ability to wait for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. As a trader, being patient is important in many different aspects. For example, it's important in a new trader with a small account, they be patient in growing their account size. I can't tell you how many times I come across traders with a small account, say for example, a $30,000 account, yet they're acting as if they have a $300,000 account. It's important to allow time for your account size to grow. Don't focus on the dollar amount. Focus on becoming a more consistent, profitable option or stock trader. If you do that, then financial success, it will come. On the contrary, if you focus on only trying to do trades that will dramatically increase your account balance, typically, those trades are going to go against you and the complete opposite of what you're trying to accomplish is what's going to happen. Don't force trades. Don't use a ton of margin or leverage. Another form of patience is important when entering trades. For example, we really try to make sure that we're entering trades when we have good odds of winning on that position. It takes a lot of time for me every day to review all my potential trades, run returns, and double check that to make sure that it still is advantageous for us to enter the position before finally getting around to actually placing the order. Every day I review a lot of potential stocks. I'm looking for the ones that are entering our sweet spot. Once I narrow that down to anywhere from five to 10 potential trades, I then run those returns. Then I look at the potential stocks charts on up to four different time frames. If all that looks good, then I enter the order. There are absolutely times when I will miss a trade by 30 minutes because of this process. However, I'm okay with that. If a position moves away from you so that you won't get a good enough price, be patient. Set your limit order and let the order just sit out there just to see what happens. If it doesn't get filled, then just look for other opportunities. If neither one of those are possible, then I promise there will be another potential trade later. Don't force a trade at an undesirable price just because you're impatient and because you want to make a trade. Another form of patience comes from wanting to be a better trader. It takes time, education, association with other traders, and learning from your mistakes to become a top tier trader. None of that happens overnight. Being a part of a group of traders will definitely accelerate your growth curve. If you like to associate with a group of positive minded traders that are trying to become better every day, consider becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. A final aspect of patience that is required to be successful is learning how your account and you mentally will respond to various market scenarios. Here on YouTube and in my Patreon group, as well as other places that I meet traders, I find that many traders are very new to this business. They've never experienced a dramatic downturn. It's important to trade each day as if tomorrow there will be a market crash. Until you experience one, you just don't know how you're going to respond in that situation. Keep your position size small until you have experienced multiple market conditions, good and bad. The next tip applies to all stock and option traders, but if you're using any kind of margin or leverage, it applies to you times 100. It's short and powerful. I got this out of a book that I read many years ago. The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. You must plan for the worst case scenario on every trade. Do not enter trades in positions that can put you out of business if they go against you. You could be 100% right in your position, but if the market disagrees with you and you're using too much leverage or margin, it can put you right out of business. If it doesn't happen this time, eventually it will if you're using too much margin or leverage. To me, probably the hardest and yet the most important thing to learn in trading is not how to read a chart. It's not how to pick a company with the best fundamentals. In my opinion, the hardest and yet most important thing to learn as a stock and option trader is how to control your emotions of fear and greed. It's vital that you learn to sense when those emotions are starting to sneak up on you and influencing your decisions. As soon as you sense that either one of those emotions are affecting you, even to the smallest degree, take a break, walk away, and give your head time to reset. Mistakes come from making decisions that are based on fear, and greed. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below.